Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the MiG-21 Lazur-M. And if you are not familiar with this vehicle, yes, it's a MiG-21. And yes, it's a MiG-21 BIS. It's not a different version. It's simply a BIS, but it doesn't have the massive chode underneath the vehicle there, the countermeasure port. So it looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing. And you still have, if you so desire, six all-aspect missiles. I carry four of the R60Ms and two of the R13s. The R13M1s have slightly more range. I just like to have a little bit more utility. But all in all, it's probably the best loadout or run six R60Ms because the rest here, carrying four missiles total, I do not think is worth it. Whereas carrying six still, but swap, swapping two out to have a little bit of a different utility is very, very nice. Four R60Ms, why would you? And the R3S as well as the R3R are just both absolutely appalling. And nowadays you don't really catch people off guard with them anymore. Back in the day, radar missiles in the head-on were not very prevalent, especially on something like a MiG-21. It didn't have all aspect missiles either. So people weren't expecting to be launched at in the head-on. Nowadays everyone is, and everyone is going to be dodging these. At least, well... If you, not run, if you don't run into a level 5 player that just bought a premium plane, and you will run into a lot of these, but still, they're very easy to dodge by someone that simply just janks them out because they get scared. These missiles are not very good, and I do not recommend you to take them. What I recommend for you is countermeasures on mix, because you do need a little bit of chaff here and there. You can get away with only flares, because you want to kind of play this thing down low, so you can use terrain to defeat radar missiles. But you do want to start from high. You do not want to be the first one in. You do not want to be the one head-on jousting with enemy F-16s, MiG-29s, F-4EJKs, all that good stuff. You are going to be losing. You need to use terrain or you need to make sure that you're not even on the radar altogether. So I like to climb over them. It is kind of risky and if they start launching shit at you from like 20 kilometers away, it can be kind of painful. It is kind of stressful to play. You... You lose all your speed very quickly. You get it back relatively fast. But it's not like in the old days where the MiG-21 had an absolutely overperforming engine. And it was an absolute rocket ship. It's still basically a flying rocket with some wings attached to it. Especially on low fuel. But it's nowhere near as cracked as it once was. So do I recommend you to pick this thing up? I'm not exactly sure. I don't think there is much to grind here that is worth it. If you are going to be buying, say, Lazur to get them MLA. If you buy this one right here, you actually get the MLA, but you also get to grind some new stuff. As of right now, I do not think it's worth it in terms of grinding. Because the British or the because the Russian tech tree simply has the better stuff over there. Now, if you are looking to get rank 5 and down below, then yes, it has some is interesting stuff, but you don't need to buy a rank 7 or even 6 or even rank 5 premium for that. If you are looking to get top tier and you are looking forward to, well, whatever the Germans get imported in, in the future, then I think the Lazur is a fine pick because it's just going to be more enjoyable than the SPSK and much more enjoyable than something like a G91R4. All in all, I don't think either of any of these are worth it, but hey... It's an okay plane, and with the new battle rating changes coming out, if this thing stays 11.0, and a lot of stuff goes to 11.7, or even 12.0, it might have a very favorable matchmaker, but I cannot tell you that in advance. Before we get started with the gameplay today, thank you to all my YouTube members, as well as my Patreons, and everyone looking to get this decal to put all over the vehicle, you can do so with the discount code down below. You get a 3% discount, I get a little bit of a cut, and you get to plaster this thing all over your vehicle. I do recommend you, however, to not put it over a red background, because it just instantly dilutes the entire picture. So, how do we fly the MiG-21 BIS? And I've made quite a few videos on these things. I made one on the Swedish one, I made one on the BIS Sau, I made one on the original Russian one. I made a lot of MiG-21 videos. And they all still kind of play the same. If you look at the Swedish one especially, it's still in the current meta. It is still almost the same stuff. And it's a very simple plane. I would dare to say old school. And I hate that I'm using that term because, well, old school to me is actually like F2 Sabre versus Big 15 Bis. But, you know, that's not where we are anymore. We are now looking at F16 versus MiG-29. How far we have gone. But this thing is very, very simple. You just, you take a Delta Wing. 
You slap a massive engine on it. You slap some all aspect missiles on it. You slap a water pistol underneath the belly. And you basically call it a day. The radar on this thing really isn't that useful. You're not going to be using it that much. And I recommend you to just turn it off for most of your engagements. All it's going to be doing is give your enemy an RWR warning. And you don't really want to do that. Because this is a plane that kind of relies to be on the offensive. If you are going to be defensive in this thing, you are going to be pretty bad off. Why? Because you are not going to be maintaining your speed. And the planes around you kind of outclass you now in regaining your energy. Before, it was pretty strong at that. You could go into a fight and then just accelerate out of it. And you would completely drain the other guy. Even though you would drain more speed than them. The MiG-21 just got it back so quickly that at the end of the day it didn't really matter. And that's the beauty of it. Or at least was. Now, MiG-29s, F-104Ss, Kefirs... F-16s, they all just kind of out-accelerate you, mainly also because they just hold their speed better than you. So you can't really do your gimmick anymore. You cannot try to air brake behind someone and then just kind of reel them in again because you out-accelerate them. It's not going to be happening and you really need to fly this thing like an absolute vulture. And you can get good games and we get a pretty decent game in this match right here. And it's very representable for what this thing can do. If the cards align. In a vehicle like this. If you get multiple people on you. And they like to kill you. You are going to have a little bit of an issue. Because the first one is just going to be draining you of all your speed. Second one comes in. And there is absolutely nothing you are going to be doing about it. Right here we have an F5 on a 6. And he's kind of annoying to deal with. But I notice that F16. He shoots a missile off. So I start turning into the F16. Because I know that the F16 has all aspect missiles. And if I get the F5 close enough. He's probably going to be very fixated on me. Because he sees me getting closer. He's getting ready to line up the shot. And he's probably not going to be looking around for my friendlies and that's exactly what happens and he ends up eating an aim9l directly to the cockpit so he is down and now we go towards the middle of the map we do want to be careful we are relatively low on fuel i run this thing for 20 minutes it does not have the performance anymore to run this thing in a full tank so you need to be climbing over people anyway you need to basically get all your impact like in the first clip on LLA main where you get a lot of kills done like you kill 25 percent of the team and then you leave then you can do something but even then, with 30 minutes of fuel, you are simply going to be too heavy. F4J doesn't drop his afterburner. He gets slapped out of the air. F4E coming in, as well as another F4E above him, and an F16. So right now, I don't want to start a dogfight, and you can tell. I know I can dogfight the F4E. But there are three people around. I am not sure how they are going to be reacting to me slowing down. So I want to... Take it somewhat slow right now, but I don't have that much time because, as you can tell, my fuel is drooping down very, very quickly. So, I'm waiting for the other guy that was bombing because he's either going to come head on with me, he's going to engage me, and he's going to start dogfighting me. And then I can start dogfighting them both at once, which is a lot more ideal. Or what he does is he goes head on, he passes over us, and then he simply RTBs because he is bombing. So, I shoot a missile off anyway in the case I get lucky. I do not. Also gets rid of a little bit of weight. Because I need to start dogfighting the other FRE now. If the other one comes back. The one that's going RTB right now. I'm in a little bit of a tough spot. I put all my eggs in one basket. I kind of betted on the fact that that guy was going to be RTB. Because he wasn't really looking for a fight. So I will full send it with this FRE. In the hope that the other one actually goes back to his airfield. Luckily for us. He does. So we did put all our eggs in one basket. And gambled it all on one thing happening. Luckily for us, we predicted it right. And we are now directly on the 6th of the F3. Low fuel MiG-21 biz. He is not going to be winning that. I'm getting on this 6. I get on this 6. And I get some absolute pitiful damage with this gun. I'm not sure if I want to call it a water pistol with sulfuric acid anymore. I think I'll just call it a water pistol from now on. Because that damage is absolutely horrible. So I'm going to be taking off. I'm still with 20 minutes on fuel. I say on my way and as I press enter the guy basically explodes. He's like nah you're not on your way at all. I'm just going to be killing myself. No he's free to do that. But we are now 1v2. f That's still base bombing. So I'm going to be kind of letting this guy on our 6. Because I want this guy to engage me. I need this guy to engage me before the F-16 comes in. Because if this guy thinks well I've got enough base bombing done. I'm now going to be helping my teammate because it's 2v1. Then I'm going to be in a very tough spot. So all I have to do now is make sure that the FRE does not get its nose on me. And I want to make sure that that doesn't happen by staying relatively quick. Still being able to complete my turns. But I also want him to overshoot. Now luckily for us, the MiG-21 Biz 
absolutely pisses away. It's NLZ. I get a pretty decent position here. So I'm going to be cutting in. I'm going to be cutting underneath him. If he takes that shot, he dies. We drop the flaps a little bit to just turn the engine up just a little bit quicker. Very, very close. And we get directly on the 6 of the FRE. Now, the FRE could have just ran away here. I'm not sure why he didn't. Instead, he decides to go for an AI in the middle of his turn. He then notices that I'm getting pretty close. I take a shot at him. I crit him. But he's just... At this point, he's just dolphining around. It's very annoying to lead. Line up the gun for a final time. And down he goes. And now, all we have left is the enemy F-16. And the F-16 is a very dangerous target in this thing. Luckily for us, he just took off. And we are on 6 minutes of fuel. And remember what I said earlier in this video... This plane, with very low amounts of fuel, becomes an absolute UFO. A little bit like the J7E does, the high to low fuel difference is absolutely massive. And the thing that I want to do here is get position early on and get on the 6 of the F-16. So right here I get a shot. I'm going to be waiting on the 6. I probably should have shot it off that to just get rid of the weight, but it doesn't really matter. I'm still on the 6. And the fuel difference here is so damn massive that it doesn't really matter what he's in. He can be in the MiG-21 bis without upgrades. And if this fuel discrepancy is so big, you're still going to be winning. Fuel is absolutely massive at top tier. And if you get position on someone, then well, all I have to do is just crank the elevator. Absolutely stamp on it and just kind of sit on his ass. And this is a very tough spot to be in, especially if you are inexperienced. Which is what I was trying to force as well. If you get on someone's 6, they can start to panic. They can start to mess up. And even if they have the better flight performance. But you can tell I'm just very easily pulling into him. We line up the shot. And we gun him out of the air. And that's all I have for you today with the MiG-21 Bis in Azure. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.